Hey, y'all. Quick question for you. What does Martin Luther, his small catechism that he wrote, and rap and hip-hop music have in common? Well, I've got an answer for you. We'll talk all about it on the other side. Hey there, and welcome to all my fellow Christian rock, Christian music, and just music fans in general out there. Tim Risto here, host of the Creative Christians podcast, joining you once again for another episode of Tim Talks Christian Rock. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share it with someone you love. Also, if you have not heard the Creative Christians podcast, please head on over to my Buzzsprout page. The link is on screen now, and it's also in the description below. Check it out. It's all about Christians and creatives and how their faith influences their work and creativity. Today, we're starting a new kind of series here for Tim Talks Christian Rock with a feature that I'll do once a week highlighting a different album in Christian rock or Christian music history. Now in particular I've tended to focus on the classic stuff from past decades, classic Christian rock albums, classic Christian music albums, and for the most part I'm going to continue to follow that trend. However, from time to time there's going to be some new albums, new music out there that I'd like to highlight as well. So today we're going to do just that. My leadoff question was, what does Martin Luther, the writer of the Small Catechism, have in common with rap and hip-hop? Well, the answer is this album right back here. It's an album called Freedom Lessons. And it's by an artist by the name of Flame, a, a rap and hip-hop artist along with a bunch of other artists, too, most of whom I am not familiar with at all. I'm only vaguely familiar with Flame. But they've combined as part of something called 1517. They've combined together to create this album called Freedom Lessons, which basically takes Martin Luther's small catechism and sets some of the uh, you know concepts within the catechism to rap and hip-hop music. And it's really a little bit more than that. I mean, there, it's not a strong rap album. It's not even a, a necessarily strong hip-hop album, although that's probably its greatest emphasis. Um, but it does have a lot of gospel vibes to it, and I kind of like that mix of this album. It's a softer kind of you know rap hip-hop album. Uh, it's not totally gospel either. It's even got some pop vibes in there too a little bit. So it's an interesting mix. The, the closest thing I can compare this to musically, I guess, would be maybe Lecrae's Restoration album. And that's not a hard comparison because his is definitely more heavier hip-hop. Um, but that album for Lecrae had a lot of gospel aspects to it. And that's kind of a little bit of what I feel coming away from this, at least on a, a two quick initial listens to this. I need to really absorb this more and do a fuller review of the album in a separate video. But this video really is just about kind of introducing the unique concept of this album, of taking Martin Luther's small catechism and setting it to rap hip-hop music, uh, in particular the, the concepts there within the catechism, which of course are founded on biblical concepts. Before we dig into the album itself, let's just get a little overview on it. We'll hop on over to rapzilla.com here and get some perspective. Here's an article titled Flame and 1517 Music to Drop Martin Luther-Inspired Freedom Lessons by Justin Sarachik. Imagine a musical tapestry woven with threads from seminary professors, Luther's small catechism, and the rhythmic beats of hip-hop. Flame and 1517 Music proudly introduce Freedom Lessons, an album that transforms the core teachings of Luther's small catechism into a musical experience. It is slated to drop on digital platforms on November 10th. Freedom Lessons will also be available as a limited run vinyl record. Here's that album art again. I actually really like this album art. This is from Flame's Instagram. Uh, really great, great album cover, I have to say. 
I think that's Flame there. That might be Blake Flatley there, I think. I'm not sure exactly, again, who each and all of these are. These must be the seminary profs hanging out in the background there looking a little out of place and uncomfortable. But, uh, hey, they contributed to the project, so I'm not knocking their, knocking their contributions at all. Uh, Freedom Lessons is more than just an album. It's a creative endeavor to convey the enduring truths of the Reformation in a fresh and innovative manner. The brainchild of 1517 Music, so this was their idea, this musical compilation shows their commitment to presenting profound truths through the language of music. Flame hails Freedom Lessons as a practical jewel that communicates these ideas and helps people understand God's love for us. Love that. The album features performances by Flame, Loso, and other talented musicians, blending the wisdom of the catechism with diverse musical styles, such as folk, rock, hip-hop, and gospel. There's the track list there, eight tracks. Freedom Lessons is more than an arrangement of melodies. It's a message of hope and a reminder of our forgiveness, righteousness, and freedom in Christ. This musical endeavor invites believers and seekers alike to connect with these profound truths in a whole new way. Very cool. Article again by Justin Sarachik, who's the editor-in-chief of Rapzilla.com. All right, let's hop on over here to iTunes and take a look at Freedom Lessons by Flame and 1517 Music. The title track, the opening track, Freedom Lessons, for which the album is named, does a really good job of introducing Luther's small catechism, explaining what it is, why it's significant, even some of the key biblical concepts behind it, such as grace, the fact that Christ died for our sins and rose again, and so on. And the first line explains it beautifully. It's a great opening line. This is the story of abject freedom. Now, abject isn't a word we hear very often these days. It's usually applied in phrases like they lived in abject poverty, meaning they're wretched or miserable, something bad or severe. So being of the most miserable kind, a poor, miserable sinner, for example, would be an abject sinner. So it could be they're using this to describe freedom because we are miserable sinners. It's something God did for us that we don't deserve, an abject freedom. But abject can also mean complete. So that person is an abject failure means they are a complete failure, right? So abject freedom would be complete freedom. And I think this is really what they're getting across based on Luther's catechism and the biblical concepts of salvation. Really a great opening line with some potential layers of meaning there. Musically, this track is a mid-paced but upbeat rocker with gospel overtones. You have flatly harmonizing the verses while Flame raps a bit in the background. At the end, it breaks down into a smooth, jazzy underscore that plays underneath sound bites of some of the theologians, or I guess they're seminary professors, explaining the catechism, including one who labels it as Freedom Lessons, which I believe was really the impetus for the album title. All that in about a two-minute track, short, sweet, tight, and a lot of variety musically and vocally and lyrically. It just sets the tone for the album really well. Though I don't deserve your gracious hand, Lord God, shine your blinding light over There's no light at the bottom When life has discarded me, left me for dead Can I rely on your promise? I heard you calling me Alright, so this is an interesting track It's a mix of hip-hop with flame Contrasting with the vocals of Steve Zank Singing the chorus This is a really mellow but smooth Hip-hop infused track 
talking about how God keeps his promises even when we're unfaithful. This one had to grow on me a little bit. At first, I wasn't sure about um, Zank's vocals as much, but I have to admit, this is one that the more I listen to it, it really draws me in. The whole concept of you know God keeping his promises to us, even though we don't deserve it, is explored really well. Nice one. If you're struggling with sin and look within and start remembering your baptism, man, that's bad wisdom. All that does is give you grace and a cop out so you don't have to act Christian. That's why I serve like it's bad men, curve all the bad women, word in my background like I'm ad libbing. Read every verse that was handwritten. Those same guys will tell you that our works prove that he has You risen. got a mean batch, folk, for sure. You're still talking, but I'm baptized, though. So go to your seal call. Your little resurrections here and there. Ain't no Track three is all about water baptism. Baptism. It opens with a father explaining baptism to his kids or asking questions. And then it segues into a rap, which is kind of a conversation between the old man, in effect our sinful nature, and the new man, our reborn life in Christ. It's a really cool concept. Now, this whole track starts off a little bit slow with all the talking, and it moves into a real 90s rap vibe to it, including some of the classic 90s rap effects and rap style. I really like this. Conceptually, it really builds in depth too, referencing Romans 6 later on being, you know, dead to sin but alive in Christ, and Romans 7 about being released from the law and bound to Christ, and even Romans 8 talking about life through the Holy Spirit. It's really deep as it draws upon those sources as Luther's Catechism does. So it's very, very cool. I like this track. And just being a fan, having grown up with 90s rap, this is kind of a treat. I really like this track a lot. Let's get into it. Apostles Creed. Faith. We're going to walk all the way through Luther's small catechism. chose to make himself known plus without his revelation we'd be wrong and guessing about our purpose as we roam through a metaverse all right track four apostles creed obviously by the title it explains as luther does again in his small catechism and breaks down the apostles creed the meaning of it this track has some nice rap and hip-hop vibes to it the lyrics and the rap is, are delivered really smoothly it's a, just a nice mellow mellow track it's got these great r&b vibes especially near the end the female background vocals are just awesome really neat way of exploring the apostles creed and again this is a pretty deep track lyrically and spiritually great tune i love the way it goes from old man new man to apostles creed and then as it builds into the next track as well Great progression of content and music. I come to you, Father, because you made a promise and put it in action. Wrapped it in flesh and blood and sent it with sinless perfection. I need your help. My daily bread, Mr. Old Man. Thought he was dead, feeling discouraged. Honestly scared that my despair would turn a rejection. I know that Jesus, he taught us to pray to you and was to say to you when we in prayer. But between sin and my suffering, death and my loved ones, I'm wondering, are you really there? I know you told us you never would leave us and you got a kingdom that surely would come. One that you started with waters of baptism that is delivered with Jesus as one. But keep me from evil, leave me not to temptation. Cause when I start to worry, my vision get blurry. And my face start to wait, and your voice start to fade. Can You Hear Me? This may be my favorite track on the album. Flame provides the rap on the verses while Flatley and Zank sing the chorus. And you know what? Their voices, Flatley and Zank, really work best together, I think. I like the combination of them. Now this has a really, I would say, 21 Pilots vibe to it, and I love it. It's kind of more rock than rap, perhaps, but at the same time, it's a really good blend of the two, just like 21 Pilots sometimes does. It's a contemplative track where we ask, God, can you hear me? Looking for God's help, coming to him 
in need. And it's this great exploration of law and gospel, really. This really feeds off of, like I mentioned, the previous two tracks, Old Man, New Man, and Apostles' Creed. And these are some deep tracks, lyrically and spiritually, that are just great to listen to. The music just makes them so much more accessible to the content, to the spiritual content we're exploring. Good stuff. Love this track. The gospel of all delivers the promise that God is among us. The spirit of all creates faith that we cling with that. Who is promise and baptism, we cling with that. The means of grace where we can taste Christ is for us, the gift of us. The gifts of God by his design. By his design. Track six, Means of Grace, upbeat R&B flavored with a catchy, infectious beat, rap and vocals that repeat the chorus of word, water, bread, wine. Obviously about the means of grace that Luther explores in the catechism. You'll be singing this one long after it's over. And what's cool about that, man, what a great way to make the means of grace something memorable in this catchy, infectious tune. Really cool track. This this would be one back in the day that'd be, you know, radio play friendly. This would be great. Second to last track, track seven, Table of Duties. Acoustic folk style, maybe a bit pop-leaning, definitely a very ballad-like tune. It actually starts off with a brief intro that, to me at least, feels like a mild nod to classic CCM, contemporary Christian music, from like the 70s and 80s. Then it gets more folk-like as it goes along. Now, by the title, of course, Table of Duties is all about the duties that people in various callings in life have, and that Luther includes in his catechism, drawn from Scripture. It's more of a contemplative track, very mellow and ballad-like. Amen. Oh, let it be. Let it be. It's in your name and at your word. And by your grace we can say You're the giver of all. Track eight, The Blessing, a very gospel-infused track with a great amen chorus by Flatley throughout. It's a great final track. If anything, my biggest complaint is it's too short. I would have loved to have a, a flame wrap in the middle and extend the track a bit, but at least he gets to close it out with a quiet amen at the end. Overall, there's some great music here, and it's driven by some wonderful musicians and artists whom I look forward to getting to know better by checking out some of their other work, too. Uh, It's also driven by these lyrics that really capture the essence and biblical concepts of Luther's small catechism really well. If I have any complaint, it's like I was referencing just a second ago, The overall album is too short. It's only 23 minutes, which in some ways, the attention spans of today is probably a positive, a good thing. You know, these are tight, short pieces. Don't want them to run on too long. But overall, this is great stuff. I'd highly encourage you to check out this album and and give it several listens. There's a lot on this that even here as I've talked about it and listened to it here during the video again, it's, it grows on you the more you absorb it and reflect on it, both musically, lyrically, and also spiritually. So obviously being based on Luther's small catechism, this album has a very you know, Lutheran uh, theology behind it, a very Lutheran uh, doctrine behind it. Part of my background has been in Lutheranism, Uh, I grew up in the Lutheran church. My father was a Lutheran pastor up until his passing in 2019. Um, 
I still love Lutheran theology, even though now my family and I are part of a non-denominational church. I still do a lot of work for the Lutheran church, have a lot of Lutheran pastors who are friends and uh, I associate with on a regular basis. Um, I love Lutheran theology. This is very fascinating to me as a Lutheran, but even if you're not Lutheran, uh, how this employs the concepts is really interesting. Like I said, I still need to do a really deep dive into this, but just again on these two initial listens, it's very fascinating. And the music is good. It's really good. It's perhaps not quite as heavy a hip hop as I would um, as I would prefer or be interested in. You know, Lutheran Church never quite seems to always go as as hard core on uh, heavier music as I as I would really like. But uh, again, this isn't representative of the Lutheran Church per se. But these artists are are making a really concerted effort to develop something and to have created something that's really very solid. And uh, musically, it's it's interesting. It's engaging. Anyway, I wanted to mention that my Lutheran tie-ins are kind of part of what fascinates me with this project and this album. But it's not all there is to it. And if you're not Lutheran, again, you're going to find some really interesting things to ponder in this and some good music to listen to as well. All right, just as a quick capper to all this, let's take a look at 1517. Go to their website, 1517.org. Just see if we can find a little bit about them, who they are, and who some of these artists are that are affiliated with this group. Uh, here in the About Us, it says 1517 is a nonprofit organization that exists to declare and defend the good news that you are forgiven and free on account of Christ alone. Okay. 1517, of course, is, you know, the year Martin Luther um, nailed the uh, 95 theses or posted the 95 theses purportedly on the church door at Wittenberg, right? So that's kind of the significance of that year, the 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 Reformation, you know, and, and significant events related to that. Here under music, we can find out a little more. It says 1517 music exists to declare and defend the good news that you are forgiven and free on account of Christ alone. We serve the church and individual Christians through original music releases, hymn sing events, and other liturgical resources. Here's some of the releases. Again, I'm not real familiar with any of these releases uh, or these artists other than, you know, Freedom Lessons here that we've just just taken a big look at. Very interesting. They have some articles here. Like I said, I think they have, yeah, they have publishing. What is, oh, here's the team of people at 1517. I don't recognize necessarily any of these there's blake flatley artist in residence 1517 music oh hey i do know this guy chad bird scholar in residence okay i actually went to college with him at concordia lutheran college back in the day so that's interesting good to see you hi hi chad hope you're doing well some of the resources that they have here some of these books and articles look kind of interesting looks like they've got podcasts videos all sorts of stuff all right, so that's my quick overview of Freedom Lessons from Flame and several other artists. What do you all think? What do you think of the concept of taking Luther's small catechism and setting it to rap hip-hop music? If you're a Lutheran yourself, do you think these artists, and I know there were some theologians involved here too, do you think all of them were successful in taking the concepts of the small catechism and putting it to rap and hip-hop music. Do you think they successfully conveyed the messages they set out to convey from his catechism through this album? And what do you think of the music itself? Do you think it's good music? Do you think it's something that uh, will appeal to people out there that enjoy rap and hip-hop music a lot? And do you think it has the potential to reach people and bring them to Christianity or to the Lutheran faith? Feel free to comment below and let me know what you think. Be sure and listen to the album. Give it some time, just like I will. I'm going to come back and do a full review. 
I'm going to see if I can hop on and grab one of those uh, limited vinyls that they're going to put out. I'm kind of curious about this. This is an interesting project, and I like the idea behind it. But what do you all think? I'd love to hear your comments. That's my first album of the week, some new music. Next week, I'll be back with another album of the week, and we'll highlight a classic album from Christian rock history. All right, that's all I got today. Until next time, be sure and listen to some great Christian music. Above all else, stay in God's Word. See you next time. Blessings. Blessings.